Hello everyone, this is Twana from DeepSet and I'm back with another example. Today we're going to be talking about query decomposition, which is an advanced retrieval augmented generation topic, which we can use to be able to make our AI applications answer somewhat complex questions. And the idea is pretty simple. Let's start with an example, a simple example. Did Google or Microsoft make more money in 2024? And actually, if you take a look at this, this is two questions hidden in one question. Before we're able to answer this question, we first have to be able to answer how much money did Google make and then how much money did Microsoft make. Only then can we actually reason about the final answer to the original question. And this is exactly the system we're going to build. We're going to have a system that really looks like the following. This looks complicated, but we're going to take it step by step. We're going to have an original query, and then we're going to use the OpenAI's structured output uh, functionality, um, which is currently in beta, but I'll, I'll show you how I've done that myself. And we're going to start keeping track of uh, sub-questions and answers. So to begin with, we'll be decomposing the original question into multiple sub-questions, and each of them eventually are going to have answers. In the middle here, you'll see that we have the multi-query embedder and retriever, which is ultimately what we're going to be using to have a retrieval augmented generation step for each of those questions so that we are able to have an answer by the time we get to this step. So by the time we've embedded the questions, retrieved context for each sub-question, and done retrieval augmented generation to answer them, we'll have completed our structured output to have each sub-question and the answer to each sub-question. Finally, we're going to reason about the final answer based on the sub-answers to each question. There's a lot of questions and answers here. So let's have a look at how this is happening. So for this example, I have already indexed my documents. What I'm using is a data set from Hugging Face that you're free to use. It's uh, Tuana Game of Thrones. We use this heavily as examples uh, for Haystack. Uh, but the cool thing about it is it's already split up. It's already pre-processed, so you don't have to do anything. And I am using Cohere to embed these documents. And I've already written them into my in-memory document store. Now, I'm not going to go through the details of how we've done this, but we do have an open AI generator with Haystack. What you should know is, as I'm filming this, this generator does not yet support structured outputs. So I've extended it to be able to support that. In the case that we do ask for structured outputs, that is going to be provided in structured reply, in the output structured reply. Um, if you want to see how this is implemented, feel free to check out the cookbook. Um, but let's go on and use it. Next is where we start building the actually interesting bits. Um, here we start defining our Pythantic model. Here, my model is pretty simple. We have questions, which is a list of question. And there's probably a way better way to name this, but each question is actually a question string and an optional answer. And when we start, this answer is going to be none. And then we start building our query decomposition step. We initially have quite an elaborate prompt that is expecting question from the user. And the instruction ultimately is telling the LLM that its job is to simplify complex queries into multiple queries that can be answered in isolation. We also provide some examples, the one that you saw earlier, but also an example where the question doesn't actually have to be broken into anything further. What is the capital of France is a single question. In this case, our list, our example list of questions contains just one question. So let's create this prompt and we're using the Haystack prompt builder. That's going to be our component. And then next, we're going to be using the OpenAI generator. I'm using GPT-40 mini. And we have to provide our questions model uh, so that we tell OpenAI to generate a response based on this model. All right, so let's start running an example that is relevant to our data set. Who has more siblings, Jamie or Sansa? By now, we only have two components, our builder that's using our prompt template and our large language model. Ideally, 
when we run this, we'll have a reply that contains two questions. So you can see we have a list, and the first question is, how many siblings does Jamie have? Our structured output right now, for now, is none. You can see a structured output here as well. Um, or how many siblings does Sansa have? And still the answer is none. As you can see, we have that in replies. We also have it in structured reply. So you can access it both ways. Next, I have two custom components. We have the Cohere multi-text embedder. So we're able to embed multiple questions if our LLM responds with multiple questions. And then the multi-query in-memory embedding retriever that is able to do the same thing, but this time we're going to be retrieving um, context for multiple questions. What's going to happen here is we'll return question context pairs where we have the sub question and then the documents that provide the answer to that specific question. So let's make sure we have these components. And then next we start creating the other segment of our prompt. So here I have a multi query template. Um, which ultimately is aiming to answer each individual sub-question. So the prompt here is providing the question from each uh, question context pair, as well as the, as the documents that relate to that question. So let's create that prompt template. In this case, what we're expecting is, again, the original query, but the question context pairs that are coming from our multi-query in-memory embedding retriever. So this pipeline is pretty complex, but we build that. And if you like, you can also have a look at what the layout looks like to make sure that it's what you expect. We have our original prompt, our OpenAI generator prov uh, providing structured outputs, multi-query retriever, and multi-query prompt. And then finally, hopefully, we're able to use another large language model and provide a structured output. This time should have the sub-query, but also the sub-answer to each query. So let's run this new pipeline with the original question from before. I've run this pipeline a few times. I will say sometimes it gets Jamie's uh, siblings wrong. Uh, because there is one brother that is often not even mentioned. So let's see if this does a good job. Um, and again, we only have one. As you can see, the query resolver LLM, so we have two LLMs here. The original one hasn't yet answered the question. But by the time we're at the query resolver LLM, you can see here we have the question, how many siblings does Jamie have? With the answer one, I know it should be two. And then how many siblings does Sansa have with the answer five? All right, so now we have the original question. We've divvied that into sub-questions, and we've answered each sub-question. The next and final thing we actually have to do is to have a large language model reason about the final answer to the original question. So that's what we're doing here. We have what I call the reasoning template where we're saying, here is the original question you were asked, and you have split this question up, up into simple, simpler questions. I have a typo, typo here. Uh, that can be answered in isolation. And then we simply provide the question-answer pairs that we've generated up here. So we have the original questions and the individual answers. So we create that. And then we simply add on to the pipeline you saw earlier. So the only two extra components you're seeing here is our reasoning prompt and what I'm going to be calling the reasoning LLM. I don't need structured outputs anymore at this point, so I am omitting providing questions uh, as my response format. So we create that pipeline, and then let's go ahead and run it with the same question, and I'm assigning it to results. And then we can simply print that out, and we have the original query was split and resolved. The question was, how many siblings does Jamie have? One. How many does Sansa have? Five. So, final answer, Sansa has more siblings than Jamie, which is correct, although I know that there's often 
another sibling that um, any type of document fails to mention, which is uh, another brother for Jamie. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. If you would like uh, to go through all of these examples, we have the cookbook on our website, uh, which you can open in Colab. Um, I'm going to link all of this in the description. If you are interested in learning a bit more in detail, it comes with an article that walks you through the idea of query decomposition and when and how you can use uh, query decomposition as well. All of these will be linked in the description. I hope you enjoyed that and see you next time.